to the second session. Uh, in this session, we will uh, be dealing with uh, Kalman filter. Uh, to summarize what we uh, discussed about uh, the different uh, problems of estimations, if you remember, uh, we said, suppose we have n samples. We have taken over a course of uh, some period of time. So S1, S2, Sn. And we said this sample was taken at T1, this at T2, and this at Tn. And if we uh, wish to determine the statistical property of these samples at time T is equal to T1, and we said if T1 is less than uh, Tn, uh, this has something to do with the past, remember? And this is a smoothing problem, right? We wish to address a smoothing problem. If T1 is equal to Tn, uh, this has to do with the uh, uh, present time. And this is a filtering problem. And we said if T1 is greater than Tn, uh, then we are dealing with a prediction. And we have seen that the minimum mean square estimation we uh, dealt with in the previous session was of this nature. Okay, T1 is equal to uh, Tn because we always focused, if you remember, at x is equal to T. And for this specific time, we want to estimate uh, x of t with x hat of t. Okay, we have considered uh, a single variable where we have a, a linear approximation and also uh, multiple uh, variables <coughs> for uh, linear uh, estimation. And finally, we generalize to a nonlinear uh, estimation. The Kalman uh, filter it deals with uh, prediction problems. Okay, it's a prediction problem, and it's also an iterative uh, estimation uh, process based on minimum mean square estimation. Okay, Kalman filter applies minimum mean square uh, estimation, but it deals with problems uh, having a prediction uh, component, having mainly prediction components. So, how can we formulate uh, the Kahneman uh, filter? Suppose we are dealing with three time, three uh, uh, specific time instances. Okay. Suppose this is t minus one, t t plus one. Okay. This is the past. Up to this point, it's the past. From this onwards, it's future. And when we are dealing with this specific period, a uh, point in time, so we are dealing with the present. Now, the Kalman filter uh, is a problem that is with the following uh, approach. Suppose, based on whatever statistics we have, Whatever knowledge we don't at this point we don't care where this knowledge uh, comes from. Suppose based on whatever knowledge we have up to this point, we try to predict, let's say, the temperature of this room at time t. Okay, whatever knowledge we have, this knowledge comes from a, a database, uh, from some uh, theoretical basis. We don't care, but based on the knowledge we have up to this point, we wish to predict the temperature of this room. And we call this xp of t. I think the green is not the good, the uh, yellow. So this is xp of t. Okay, This index p refers to a prediction. This uh, t uh, refers to the prediction is made for the time t. Okay? 
Of course, this XP has some, uh, contains some, some error. Now, when the time comes, we take measurement. And the measurement we take, we depict it as XM of T. Okay, the measurement is done when the time comes. So the question is, how can we combine this two so that we can produce the best approximation for the unknown variable x of t? Okay, the unknown variable x of t is the temperature of this uh, this room at time t. This is what we've predicted based on whatever statistics we have in the past. And this is the measurement we have taken using some sensors. And then we wish to combine them in such a way that the combined effort approaches x of t. Okay? So we have the following va random variables to deal with. x of t is a hidden variable. We cannot uh, directly observe it. So here we have a hidden random variable. Then we have the prediction xp of t. This is prediction to a certain extent reflects the, the, the reality, but introduces its own noise, okay, having a prediction error. And then we have here xm of t. This is the measurement we have made based on some available sensors. And our goal is to combine these two evidence so that the error is minimum. OK, so we have his, this x hat at time t. OK, this is the best approximation or the best estimation for the time t. The best estimation of x for time t. Okay, it must be very clear from the very beginning which variable uh, refers to which. Later on, when we combine them, it's easier to comprehend and follow. So the Kalman filter says the best approximation x hat of t combines all the evidence we have thus. So first, the first we have is the prediction for the time t. And plus, some Kalman constant, we are going to derive the, uh, the, uh, the Kalman constant, which minimizes the error. Kalman constant. And then xp of t, my, sorry, xm of t, and xp of t. This is the Kalman formulation. We call this equation one. The Kalman formulation says that the best approximation we have, and it makes sense, right? We have taken, we have made approximation. It contains error. We have taken measurement. It contains error. So we have to combine these two in such a way that by the end of the day, our confidence is stronger than the confidence we have independently uh, uh, as a result of xp or as a result of xm. So this is the first Kalman formulation. Now, how can we make this prediction is the second step. How can we make prediction? What are the type of processes we deal with to make this type? Measurement is always easier. But how can we do the, the prediction? So let's just go back to the, uh, the R window here. Suppose we are dealing with the temperature of Dresden between, let's say, October 
end February. Right? This is like the, the, the coming, uh, we are in autumn and uh, going into winter. So we know that every day from experience, the temperature reduces. Let's say this is the, the, the temperature curve, the, 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 the mean temperature curve. If we were to take every day at 12 o'clock the temperature of the city of Dresden, every day at 12 o'clock, Okay, for the next 100 days. We know that there is some correlation between the past, the present, and the future. Okay, this is the ideal temperature relationship, let's say. But what we actually know no real temperature behaves like this, right? There are some... Uh, uh, process uh, noise, what we call them, or unpredictability in the, in the temperature of the, the city. So let's just say the temperature varies, the actual temperature varies like this. So this is, for, suppose this is uh, the real temperature, this is how it varies. Okay? We know somehow that the past and the future are related with one another. But there is some uncertainty which we don't know, we, we cannot control. So in, in the process of this type of random variable, how can we best approximate the real temperature, which is uh, depicted in red? So our assumption, the, so this is the first formulation that I told you. The second Kalman approximation is somehow x at t plus 1 has something to do with the present, xt, but it is a function of some phi. For our case, it was 0 0.98, you remember? So it's somehow related with the, the future is related with the present, but there is some uncertainty which we cannot control. Okay, and this is w. We assume that W is a normally distributed, a zero mean normally distributed random variable, and we assume that we have sufficient statistics, sufficient knowledge. This can happen by observing the temperature of Dresden for the past 10 years, for example. You know, always we observe between October and uh, end of February and see how the temperature changes, okay, for the past 10, 15 years, and based on this observation, we can establish the statistics of this process noise. Okay, W is called a process noise. It's the uncertainty we have about how temperature fluctuates over time during winter. This connects the past and the future. It, it's not a random variable, but X are the random variable because we don't know them really. Okay, so this is the first one. So. The second aspect, okay, if you see the square of W, now W is a random variable, remember this is a process noise. We say that it is a normally distributed with zero mean and a certain standard deviation. Okay, with a variance, uh, sorry, W is a normally distributed, a zero mean, normally distributed random variable, and E of W, because the mean is zero, we are dealing with only W square, okay? So this, we call it Q. Q is the variance. Remember, this is, okay? Because it is easier to write Q later on when we derive. Are we fine so far? Likewise, every day we take measurements. 
using some sensors. Okay. Now the measurement we take, remember x m of t, somehow contains the real the real quantity x of t, but introduces its own noise. Okay. It introduces its own noise. Let's call this noise R because both of them are uh, regarded as noise. Okay? Or we call it V. Okay? So the measurement we take has something to do with the reality, but the measurement itself introduces some, some noise. And again, we assume that V is a normally distributed a zero mean normally distributed random variable with some standard deviation sigma v. And we assume that E of uh, V squared R. Okay? Now another assumption we make the process noise and the measurement noise have nothing to do with one another, right? Because we said at this period, we make prediction for this one. We haven't made any measurement yet, right? Which contains its own error. And at this point, we make measurement. This is xp of t, xm of t. So the sensor has nothing to do with the, the, the past statistics we have. So we say the expected value of v and the w, they are independent. They are independent random variable. In general, the covariance of this, OK, we just write the covariance uh, V and is zero. Okay. Knowledge of one does not help us to arrive at any conclusion about the other. Okay. So far the, the, the description is clear. I give you some uh, I give you a chance to ask questions. About Kalman filter, the formulation, yes. Uh, so the relationship between uh, in, in, uh, prediction that means uh, the looking into the future, um, right? Prediction has something to do with the, the future. Is it, is it the, the possible the, the relationship between t, uh, t minus one and the v is linear? It's always always linear. You can, you can apply the Kalman filter for the past without going into the future. It's possible. But you have to begin from the past, move forward up to the time you want to address. But still, the, 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 the approach is a predictive approach because you have to look forward before something happens and then make prediction. And then when the, that thing has happened, then you make measurement and then compare your measurement with your prediction. Correct your error and then move on and make prediction, which is why we say uh, Kalman filter is a prediction problem. Uh, my question uh, is uh, in the formula, the prediction. So far, we are dealing with the present. We, I, I will come to the future. In in the, if you are, are you uh, addressing this one? This one. This is a, a prediction. Assume, yes, thank you. Uh, th this is another assumption. The, the, the Kalman filter assumes that the relationship between the prediction and the measurement can be described as a linear combination. Yeah, that's quite all right. Later on, we can uh, generalize this also to nonlinear uh, problems, but so far we started with a linear uh, uh, estimation. Any other question? Uncorrelated, yes. That's what we say. 
because when we do prediction, we haven't made any measurement yet. You can pick any sensor, right? Any measurement, uh, still the statistics will stay. So ha one has nothing to do with the other. Any other? So we are fine so far. OK. So the Kalman, the best approximation for time t we have. Remember, the best approximation we can have for time t is the following. So I reproduce this one for you to uh, remember where we're going. t, t plus 1, t minus 1. At t minus 1, based on whatever we have, we make prediction and we call it xp of t. At this period, we take measurement xm of t. And then now we have two independent sources. We combine them using x hat for t is equal to xp of t plus some Kalman constant for that time, x m of t minus x p of t. OK? This is what we can. Now, this is the best now we have. Then for the future now, for x p of t plus 1, now, the prediction we make at time t for t plus 1 is based on this. This is the best information we have now. It is a function of phi and x hat of t. So this is the best prediction we can make based on the best available evidence we have. Now, of course, we said x hat approaches reality but never touches it. As a result, we have some error. This is the collective, the combined error of both the prediction and the measurement is x of t minus x hat of t. And our aim is by determining the best Kalman constant, which minimizes the square, the, the expected value of the square of this error. Are we all right? OK. So let's, our aim is minimize minimize. Let's call this one, this error, you see this? Let's call this S. Because we are now talking about, here we have, remember the error introduced as a result of the measurement is r. The error introduced as a result of the process is q. So I'm now picking s. Later on, we're going to pick up p for, for something else. This simplifies, otherwise the mathematics is really, really hideous. But if we use these letters, it's more comprehensible. And from now onwards, unless it is ambiguous, I'm going to drop t. OK? I'm going to drop t. We don't, because implicitly, we're talking about t. So far, we are dealing with the presence. And uh, when we move to prediction, we're going to put t again. Everything OK? Good. So this is our aim. We wish to minimize the, the error. So how can we minimize? Again, we, the, the idea is clear. We want to differentiate this with respect to k and set it to 0. And the term we derive as a result is going to be the Kalman constant for that time. That OK? All right. I think we don't need this, uh, the, the project uh, for now, so I'm going to switch it off. So we have enough space here. OK, now we have to describe E 
instead of this one, I'm going to substitute the term above. OK, maybe it takes some time to cool down. So our error, now it's s, is the uh, expected value of x minus x hat times x minus x hat. We can describe it like this, right? So this is equal to e x minus, now instead of x hat, what we have? xp plus k xm minus xp. Sorry, this is just one term. OK, so this, remember, this is x hat. So this, OK, for this one we have, for this one we have, for this one, OK, this we have. And then we duplicate this, x minus xp plus k xm minus xp. We can do that. Now we are dealing here with two unknowns. We can substitute xm, right? We have said xm of t, something to do with x of t plus the error introduced by the measurements, right? So we can now substitute xm here. OK, so we duplicate this one. The mathematics is a little tedious, but it is straightforward. There is no need to be to worry about. OK, so this is x minus. Now we can sell minus xp here. This is minus k. Now instead of xm, we have minus xt. Again, k plus v here. So it's minus kv. And then this is minus k xp. So this is one term. Uh, please follow me so that I don't make a, a mistake and we don't uh, oversee. So we have to uh, duplicate that again. x minus xp minus kx minus kv minus k. OK, this is our error. And this is s. We have labeled it as error. Now, let's collect uh, like terms. Here we have x. Where else do we have x? Here we have x. So x we have xp here we have and here we have xp you see that okay so this is e of so if i remove x here we have 1 here we have minus k right and then <clears throat> uh, minus if I collect xp, xp here it's minus now because we have removed minus, it's going to be 1, right? So this is 1. And then here also, uh, if I remove minus, it should be, this is, should be plus, right? This minus. Minus is plus, right? So this should be plus. So if I, uh, because I have to multiply it with minus in order to make it plus, right? 
So here it's going to be k. So this is one term, but we have to uh, collect also minus kv. Minus kv. Are we fine? So this is one of the terms, and then we duplicate the same one. So this is x into 1 minus k minus xp into 1 minus k minus kv. So this is the, the error we have. So now we can also collect. Look here, we have 1 minus k. Here we have 1 minus k. So we can collect as like terms. OK, maybe we can move to here. So let's just collect again like terms. S is equal to the expected value of 1 minus k into x minus xp. Because here it is a positive x. Here we have a minus xp. Then minus kv into the same thing. into 1 minus k x minus xp minus kv. Uh, this is just, yeah, we use this one. OK. Now if we distribute, what do we get? We call this, you see x minus xp? This is a prediction error. The, the, the error we make in predicting, because the difference between the real value for that time period and the predicted value for that time period. OK. So if, if we now distribute here, this is one term. So this is another term. So we have here this term times this term this term times this term, and this term times this term. So what we have here, so the prediction, this is the collected, collective error for time t is 1 minus k into 1 minus k, because this time this into e x minus xp, x minus xp. So this is one term we have. And this, is the, this term, you see this term times this term. The expected value of v and xp, they are uncorrelated, we have said. So this is 0. You understand? We have said E of anything associated with XP and anything associated V, the expected value of this, these two are independent from one another. So the covariance is 0. We agree? OK, so we, we don't deal cross terms. But this one we have here. So this is minus k squared expected value of v. So this is our covariance term. Anybody with ambiguity? Hmm? This k times k is k squared. And then this is the square of. 
okay the, this this is this term okay so this is plus could be yeah minus times minus is plus so we have uh, plus is it okay so this is let's say you see here it's a co uh, uh, a mean square error and this mean square error we call it p it stands for prediction error okay so the collective error we have for the time t is 1 minus k square times the prediction error plus k square what this one this is the error no, the, the measurement noise Somewhere we have said the measurement noise, you know, the noise contained in XM. So this term we have is R. So now we have to differentiate this error to determine K. Are we all right so far? Okay, so the partial with respect to k of s is equal to the partial with respect to k of the whole term. 1 minus k square of p plus k square of r. Since we are dealing with here a summation problem, first we have to differentiate this one. So when I differentiate this with respect to k, what do I get? 2, 1 minus k times p. And then the inner integral is minus 1, right? So this is what I get. If I differentiate this one, we have 2k r. And we set this to zero. Of course this amounts to taking this to the other side, right? So this is equal to, from this we can derive 2kr is equal to 2 times 1 minus k times p. Okay. So we have to distribute, I am afraid, here. So first, we just cancel 2. So here we have kr is equal to p minus kp, right? So we collect like terms. So if I move this one here, I have k p plus r is equal to. So k for the time t now I include t don't forget if the prediction made for time t divided by the prediction made for time t plus the measurement noise uh, the measurement variance this is independent of time we, we assume at least the measurement does not change its behavior over time okay we're considering a short period of time so here we have r so this is the most important expression. This is equation two. Remember, equation one has something to do with the estimation of x. x hat is equal to xp of t plus k into xm of t minus xp of t.
Okay, so this is the prediction error for time t divided by the prediction error and the measurement error. So you can see that the common constant takes into account all the evidence we have. Okay, we have made a prediction, we have made a measurement. Hmm? It takes into account all this. Now what is the, the error? If we substitute this k into s, into s, what do we get? Okay, let's begin from here. If we substitute the Kalman filter, what do we get? So remember from here, no, not from here, but from S, S is this one, 1 minus k, 1 minus k. This is the prediction error, we call it P, plus k square r. Okay? So this, let's call this 1 into k, the whole square of p plus k square r. So now we know this is 1 minus into what's k? P over P plus R times this one. Okay, plus now K is P into P plus R, the whole square into R. Okay, if we just, I'm trying to find a decent way of uh, simplifying this one. So this will, we take this one into P plus R minus P, right, over P plus R, the whole square times P. plus P over P plus R, the whole square times R. So P minus P goes, what we have here is R over P plus R, right? So this is just one over R. So this is R into P plus R, so here we have P plus P into P plus R the whole square times R. Okay, thank you, thank you. So this is the square. So are we going to do So we can write this as one of R and so what we can do here R into P plus R uh, sorry uh, what I'm trying to do is uh, I can write this as R square P 
plus r square, you see, times p plus, this I just leave it as it is, p over p plus r square times times r. So I bring one of this one. For one of this is going to be uh, so p into p plus r times, for this one, we have r square p plus r. We can write it like this. Do you, do you agree with me? OK, so this is plus here p, p plus r, p into p plus r times r. Now I'm going to substitute uh, the Kalman uh, p plus this one here, you see. This is the Kalman coefficient. Uh, this one is the Kalman coefficient. So we can uh, remove k. So this is k into what we have here is r square over p plus r. Plus here we have, remember we are trying to express the error for time t. OK, so what we have is here, I have removed this one. So p into p plus r. So r, again, I remove r, sorry. Because, OK, here, if I remove r here, So what we have, you see here? What do you see? This is one, right? Because the, the, the collective term is what? P plus R, P plus R. If I take this as a denominator, this is going to be P plus R. So what do we have? This is just one. So what we have is S is equal to R. into k. So this is the third important. We are nearly done, in case you guys are exhausted. So at time t, the most important thing is we described x hat in terms of the prediction and the measurement for x. Secondly, we derived the optimum k to mix the two. OK? You remember how we mixed them? Let me summarize the three, of the three things we have collected so far. Most beautiful expressions in science are always simple. I don't know. At the end, they always lend themselves to simple expression. So the collective error, you can see, we started really in a nasty way, but arrived at a very simple expression for, er for the error. And also for the Kalman filter, we arrived really at a simple expression. So far, what we have done is x hat we can combine uh, the prediction for x at t, uh, the prediction for uh, x for time t, plus k into x m of t plus x t of t. This is the first thing we derived. The Kalman constant for the time is described as k of t is equal to p of t, p of t plus r. And then we said the collective error now we have as a result of this combination, s is equal to k times r. So these are the most important expressions for Kalman filter. Now, so far, we just dealt with the present 
t for, for, for the time t. Now we want to propagate our belief into the future and then see what will be the error or the result of this propagation. Okay? We have said, okay, for the future, okay, we said x prediction for t plus 1. Remember what I'm going to, I'm doing is the following. I made prediction. This is t minus 1, t, t plus 1. A time t minus 1, based on whatever knowledge I have, I made prediction. And this is x, p of t. A time t, I took measurement. Now, for the same time, I combine them to determine x hat. x hat for t is described already. Now, this is the best estimation of x I have for that time. So whatever prediction I make, it has to include this term. Whatever prediction I make is based on the best estimation I have for that time. So xp of t is equal to, we know that the past and the future, sorry, the past, the present, and the future are connected with this one. Now, since I'm dealing with the future t plus 1, for time t, the best estimation of x I have is x hat. OK, so this is my prediction. Of course, this prediction contains error. Now, what's the prediction error for, for, for time t plus 1? OK, let's determine that one. For time t plus 1, OK, I'm going to erase this one. OK, the error. Remember, P stands for prediction error. But now we are dealing with T plus 1. The prediction error at T plus 1 is what? The difference between x at T plus 1 minus xp T plus 1. But we say that what's x T plus 1? This has something to do with phi, x of t, plus the, the, the process noise, right, which is w. So this minus xp t plus 1. But we have said xp t plus 1 is this one. phi x hat of t. So collecting like terms, we have x of t minus x hat of t plus w. OK, so this is the prediction error. Uh, Uh, I have made a, this is a prediction error. So we have to describe this in terms of the estimation of this square, sorry. Right? So here we are dealing with the square of this. Because we are dealing with the estimation, not OK? But the square of this thing, you see, phi we will just remove. Look here. 
x of t minus x hat of t into x of t minus x hat of t. What's this term? This is s. This is the error for time t, right? The expected error for time t. You remember this? The expected error for time t we define as s. And this term and this term are statistically independent. So the covariance is 0. So what we have is the square of this term. So the prediction for time t plus 1 is equal to phi times, this is s plus e of w square. w square is the the process noise, the process variance. So this is equal to phi s plus w. So this is the force expression, important expression for Kalman filter. So what we did was We made prediction, took measurement, combined them, again made prediction. When it comes, uh, when t plus 1 comes, we'll make measurement, get the best estimation for that, and then always propagate the prediction into the future. And the prediction error we have will accumulate itself like this. Yes? Uh, isn't it phi times w as well? Could be. Could be. So let's see. Where what, where are we? I don't think it's phi times w though. This is phi x t plus w minus x p t plus one. Instead of x p, we said phi x. So when we remove phi, this term and this term add. W remains alone. Right? So this, this has nothing to do with phi. Remember, phi simply connects the past and the future. For example, for our case, in the beginning, we said the temperature in Dresden changes as 0 0.98 times the, the present. That, that's the connection. OK, so this was the subject of today's discussion. If you have any, uh, any question, you can raise them now. Any doubt, any ambiguity, confusion, frustration, everything's fine? All right, thank you very much. So this was the end for, for, uh, for today. Uh, next week, we're going to see if we have time, a hidden mark of models, and then summarize the whole subject. And then we'll be over.